Now selection when we go with it, it involves a series of steps by which candidates are screened. They have experience or they don't have experience. Uh, everything, each and everything will be screened. That is called the preliminary screening. All these tests will be done one by one by the interviewers. Purpose of induction is to introduce the new employee and the organization to each other. Hello everybody, a warm welcome to One and All. I'm Abhilash Chandra from the Department of Commerce and Management in Vidyashram First Grade College, the Temple of Excellence. Welcome to all the students. Now we are in the fifth chapter called as Selection. Now I'm going to explain you what exactly Selection is. Selection chapter is a very small chapter where we can actually get a 15 marks question as well as a 10 marks question, totally 25 marks question you people can get in this chapter. Now when we go with the selection, what exactly selection means? Now selection when we go with it, it involves a series of steps by which candidates are screened for choosing the most suitable persons for vacant job in the organization. That means when a job is vacant, what usually the company does is they go for recruitment. Now I have told you what exactly recruitment is all about. That is inviting people to face the interview. Now what happens is a selection it is a process. Now when we go with the process, what really happens is selection involves a series of steps. That is where a potential candidate or a prospective candidate will come. He will go through the interviews and all and then he gets selected for the right job. That means the right person for a right job at the right place and at the right time. Now a formal definition is that it is a process of differentiating between applicant in order to identify those with the greater likelihood of success in a job that is called selection now process of selection now process of selection is a very important topic the first one is preliminary screening now what happens in the preliminary screening the applicants whoever are seeking for the job they actually make a resume or they go with cv curriculum wishing now when they give it to the reception the reception will actually have a database of all the resume and the cv of the candidates who are suitable for the job or not suitable of the job each and every candidate resume and the cv is taken in the desk office after that what happens is whatever or whichever the job vacancy is there now the reception will actually screen each and everything that is a preliminary screening that is their education their qualification they have experience or they don't have experience uh, everything each and everything will be screened that is called the preliminary screening second one is the selection test now what happens is people who are the prospective candidates they will be called after the preliminary screening is done they are supposed to face the uh, selection test now selection tests are based on the skills the person have you can go with the skill test you can go with stress test you can go with so many other tests where people will actually judge you on the basis of what you are right now and here in the selection test what happens is you are supposed to always make sure that you should be the best in whatever you do in the selection test after selection test what happens is we have employment interview now we have part a b c like that selection rounds will be there uh, round one round two round three after going with all these rounds here understand we have something called the interview where the panel members are there and they start interviewing the people now you can go with kind of an interview like a test kind of a thing next is after getting selected in that particular test and interview also you have done now what happens is the people whoever are there they'll have the background checkup that is the prospectus candidate whoever have gone through the third round now they go for a background check now here what happens is the reference and the background check is done who the person is uh, what exactly his intentions are why did he come to the organization for the interview now where was he working and why did he leave that particular job and why is that he has come to uh, this particular organization for the interview each and everything the reference check the background check will be done in this process after that we have 
the one more thing that is selection decision now after getting the interviews all done the reference is also done now you feel that okay this person is really a genuine candidate which we can actually take it now you'll go for selection decision whether you will take the person or you will not take the person after the selection decision is done now if you take the person that is you have made up your mind saying that yes we will take the person now you are supposed to go for medical examination now students understand this medical examination you can ask me a question sir why don't we do before itself and then we will actually conduct tests i'll tell you you will probably get 200 people for 10 of the vacant job now all the 200 people you can't go with reference check as well as medical examination you are supposed to filter them now what happens after reference check say probably 15 people have actually come and later in that 15 people you thought okay 12 people will go for the selection decision in that 12 now you have gone for the 12 people medical examination see understand 200 applicants and getting medical examination and only 12 people coming for the examination now what happens is again whenever you go for any interview any selection test the money goes from your pocket that is the organization money goes from the organization pocket now after examination is done you got to know that two of the people they are medically not fit now only 10 people are there now 10 vacancy seat is there 10 people have been selected shortlisted now job offer or appointment letter is given to them that means uh, you are willing to now the salary negotiation each and everything will happen in this particular round if people are okay with it they'll stay in the organization if they are not okay with it they'll uh, not come to the organization at all say we had 10 vacant seats vacant and we got 10 employees in the sense the prospective candidates let's not talk about the employees we got uh, say example of uh, candidates we got candidates now in that two of them they were not happy with the salary and uh, they have gone so we have right now only eight uh, candidates but 10 vacancies now understand for those two extra again you are supposed to go for interview what usually people do is now in the 12 medical before that we had 15 people no in that 15 three people will be called here for the again negotiation round now after the, those eight people say yes we are okay for it now they are supposed to be given offer letter and appointment letter the next one is the contract of the employment now you are supposed to go for a contract now i'll tell you here in india when we go with it whenever you feel like quitting a job you can quit the job only to see is what what is the agreement you people have made that is the top management and you people that is what you are supposed to understand and then go forward so this is called as the selection process a very important topic but very easy topic you just need to understand the reality and then you can write it selection test the next one is selection test now i've given you a few of the tests the first one is achievement test aptitude test interest test personality and intelligent test all these tests will be done one by one by the interviewers the first one here is achievement test now what is this achievement test achievement test measures the job knowledge of the applicant in the areas such as marketing hr and economics when an applicant claims to know something an achievement test is given to measure how well he or she knows it it is for this reason that achievement tests are also known as proficiency test or performance test when you go with the next one that is called the aptitude test understand the word aptitude tests are also known as potential ability test and specific cognitive test and are used to measure the latent ability of the candidate to learn a given job if he or she is given the required training that is will they be able to adapt to the situation and then work for the organization for the betterment of the organization that is what the aptitude test will be given that is given a chance does the candidate have the ability to learn and then work for the organization is what the aptitude test will result next is interest test and personality test now understand the word interest test 
Now, interest in a job or task contributes to success on the job. That is, a person interested in his or her job likely to do better than one who is indifferent, indifferent or uninterested. That is what the interest is will always go with. Now, when we go with interest is what happens is, you are good in some kind of a thing, right? That is, your interest is that you need to be a, a web designer or you have that kind of a passion now, what happens is. Now, the way you get the work done and the way the other person who is not interested, he'll get the work done, will get to know. That is what the thing is. Now, interest test is actually given to the top management as well as the middle management. Next one is personality test. Now, here when you go with personality test, these tests aims at measuring the basic makeup or characteristics of an individual. That is, they assess his or her introversion, motivation, emotional reaction and emotional maturity, even the stability, mood, value system, ability to adjust interpersonal relations, self-image, self-confidence, ambition, tact, optimism, deceiveness, sociability and so on that is what happens in the personal test how the person is what is the characteristics he carries the way he uh, deals with the situation the way the way he talks to people the way he is confident about himself the way he approaches each and everything will be judged according to the personality test next the last one here is intelligence test now these Test aims at measuring the general level of intelligence of the applicant. This is done by measuring the IQ. It is done by what? Measuring the IQ of the applicant. In addition to this, they also measure a range of abilities such as numerical ability, vocabulary, memory and verbal fluency. So this happens in the intelligence test. Next one we have is objective of interview. Now, what are the objectives of interview? Why interview should be conducted? If anybody asks you the question, there are few of the objectives which I have written. The first one is interview gives an opportunity to the interviewer to know about the applicant. Second one is interview helps to obtain additional information from the candidate as required by the job verifies the candidate has written in the CV or the main points what other additional skill set does he have all these are known by conducting interviews see many of the people they what usually they do is they copy from the internet and as it is they paste it now when we go for interview what happens is we'll get to know whether that person whoever have written it is it right or wrong the way you talk to the person and the way he uh, interacts with you the way he gives the answer you will get to know that the resume what he is he has written or the cv what he has written is totally different from the way the person is all about so the personality can also be judged in the interview gives the candidate necessary fact and information about the job organization policy product uh, manufacturers and uh, forth that is even the person who has come for the interview the applicant will also know about what really the job is all about, what we are supposed to do. It not only gives the interviewer information about the candidate technical knowledge, but also gives an insight into his much needed creative and analytical skill. Now, when we go with this interview, understand our, our very famous uh, player called uh, Ashwin, the spin baller. When he actually came to play for India, he was having a dilemma whether I should be a batsman or a bowler. But he came and he wanted to actually come as a, as a batsman. Now, understand this. Through proper interview and all these things, then people, they got to know that Ashwin can also bowl. Now, given a chance to bowl, what happened was he did not click in batting, but he was clicked more in bowling. That's the reason like... Uh, very fastly he has actually taken 400 wickets. See, this is through interview. The way you conduct interview, you will get to know the other skills also of the applicant. Next one is induction. What exactly this induction means? When we go with induction, induction is a process of welcoming. 
Now, after the person got selected, now you are supposed to go for induction program, welcoming, introducing and socializing the new entrants to the existing group of people. It is also called orientation program, which program that is orientation program. It is done to make the new employees feel welcome at the new workplace and with his senior employees. Now what happens is whenever we go with induction program, it is always like an icebreaker for the freshers to the seniors. Now even the freshers will also have a kind of feeling that will they accept or not. So that's the reason the seniors will actually make this induction program. Objective of induction. What are the objectives of induction? The first one is reduce stress and anxiety. Avoid reality shock and put the new recruit at ease. So these are the three major objective of induction. So the first one when we go with this, the reduce stress and anxiety. Now when a newcomer joins an organization, he is a stranger to the people, workplace and work environment. He may feel insecure, shy and nervous. The first few days may be innoxious and disturbing ones for him. He may have anxiety caused by not following the usual practices prevalent in the organization or the haphazard procedures and lack of information. So what happens is when we go with induction program, definitely 100% it will reduce the stress and anxiety. Next is it avoids reality shock. Now, there are people, I'll tell you, the minute they walk into the organization, they feel that each and everything is all correct. Now, there is another reason for effective induction that is, it helps to minimize what might be called the reality shock some new employees undergo. That is, this reality shock is caused by the incompatibility between what the employees expect in their new jobs and the realities they are confronted with. Now, Whenever you see any of the MNC company, what you feel is whenever you see those employees that they are always happy, they have a very good car, they have a very good uh, financial status. But when you go inside and get recruited there or uh, you, got, you got selected there, now the reality is what is only the person who has joined there you will get to know. And the last one we have is put the new recruitee at ease. That is finally the purpose of induction is to introduce the new employee and the organization to each other to help them become acquainted, help them accommodate each other. That is the newcomer is explain what is expected of him and for this he's explained the rules, regulation, policy, procedure that directly affects him. So here what happens is he is made aware of how his job fits into the overall operation of the organization. That means here what happens is he'll get to know each and everything properly, what he should do and what he shouldn't do it. That is where you will have something called the recruit at ease. Now, many of the freshers, what happens is sometimes because of over smartness, right? Because of some to just to prove that they know something, what usually happens in the induction, they kind of show off so much. Now what happens, the other people will also get to know that what those people characters are. That's the reason whenever you go for any of the new selection, you are supposed to always understand what the seniors are doing it, what the organization is, apart from not showing what you are supposed to do it or what you are capable of doing. It. Slow and study win the race, that is the combination which I always tell my students. First you know your opponent and then you play with their weakness. Never show your strength to your opponent because he will start playing with your weakness. So these are the topics for the day. Thank you so much. I'll see you when I see you.